Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have, at last, all about the Beastmaster Ranger subclass. The main pet class in the game capable of having different types of powerful animals as your trusty pets. For example we have triple ravens and also an armored bear and wolf. The Beastmaster pets are actually quite good capable of each specializing in a different area such as area of effect, damage, inflicting enemies with crowd control, abilities and debuffs, and even tanking and dealing decent enough damage per strike. As a matter of fact, your pets will scale in power with your Beastmaster level, and they receive multiple upgrades, each increasing their stats and even granting them unique and powerful abilities. Lastly, you won't just be a pet class, because your Beastmaster themselves will be quite the force to be reckoned with on their own and we'll be going all out into range so that we can easily snipe enemies while our pets handle the rest. So without further ado, let us get into our Beastmaster guide, and first I want to cover the main mechanics of the class, and then also what each pet does best with their upgrades. Later we'll cover the build, but you can just skip to that section now if you prefer. So let's give it a go. Level 3 is of course when you first get access to your pets, as this is when you can enter the Beastmaster subclass. And you can choose between the bear, the boar, the wolf spider, the dire raven, or the normal wolf. Each will excel at a different area, as I'll soon explain. While your pets might appear weak at first, you can buff them and they will scale in power with your character. As a matter of fact, they'll get the first power up at level 5, the second at level 8, and the last ultimate one at level 11. This is all with Beastmaster levels only, however, so multiclassing out of Beastmaster, well, it's not exactly a good thing to do if you want to focus on your pets, which is the main appeal of the class, of course. Your pets will actually last through long rest, and you can always summon them back again once per short rest. But you cannot have multiple ones at the same time, however. Besides some of the specific Ultimate Level 11 abilities that summon more pets. Besides that, at level 5 Beastmaster, you'll be able to empower your pets, armor class and damage equal to your proficiency bonus, which can go up to plus 4 even. The bonus to damage is quite handy because it works on all sources of extra damage, that is, let's say you hit enemies with your pet while they are debuffed with the Fowler Aluve Sword Shriek Aura for extra thunder damage on hit. The extra thunder damage will also be individually enhanced by this ability, for loads of extra damage of course. Meanwhile, at level 7, your pets will get the ability to dash, disengage, and also help as bonus actions, all of them. The last pet power up as a ranger comes at level 11. Well, it's not only when they unlock their ultimate stats, forms, and abilities, but also acquire the bestial fury power, which lets your pets attack twice per action, just like normal characters usually get at level 5 and this can result in multiple uses of some of their most powerful abilities per turn per action. Now let us cover each of the pets, their unique abilities and upgrades, and I want to start with the wolf, because overall I think it's one of the best ones. The wolf's most unique feature is its pack tactics passive, and essentially whenever you attack an enemy you always have free advantage, so long as there's an ally nearby, very easy because, well, the wolf is melee. What this means is, by default, you'll always have better chances of hitting the enemy and getting critical hits with the wolf pet, as opposed to other pets. Even the earliest variant at level 3 will already have pack tactics. Now, its second unique ability is called Lunging Bite, which can both deal damage and also knock enemies down, but they can of course resist it with a saving throw and it deals slightly less damage than its normal bite attack. Meanwhile, the first upgrade for the wolf will replace its normal bite attack with an infectious bite that deals a lot of extra necrotic damage and even attempts to debuff the enemy with the unique septic status effect. The second wolf upgrade doesn't really learn any new abilities. It's just an increase to stats. And this will be the same for all the other pets at this point. It is only the ultimate upgrade coming next, 
that will provide them with new abilities. As for the last wolf power up, this is when you'll get the ultimate wolf ability, Lupin Slash, which works kinda like the classic cleave ability, you can hit multiple enemies as an area of effect, and you get to spam this as many times as you want depending on how many actions you have. Amusingly enough, the damage, while not that high, is actually force, so mostly irresistible, and it will not hit allies. Now let us cover another one of my favorite pets, the Spider, an amazing choice for the early game, and also crowd control when debuffing the enemies. It's actually the pet that starts with around the highest dexterity, which means it's great for acting first with decent initiative. Now, as one might expect, its most unique ability, even as the earliest variant, is the classic web. It has a rather huge range and area of effect, and will of course enweb enemies on a failed dexterity save, which means advantage on your attacks against them and disadvantage on the enemy's own attacks. And as you might expect, the spider itself can of course walk on the webs without being hit with the debuff. Not so much for your allies, however. Anyways, web alone means the spider will be the best source of enemy crowd control early on. Perfect for combining with a ranged beastmaster. The spider also has a venomous bite that can poison enemies for disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Now the level 5 spider, so with the first upgrade, will receive a massive boost to both dexterity and also armor class. It's definitely the tankiest pet, despite its not so good hit points, but that can be buffed. And it also gets the unique Cocoon ability. This has somewhat of a short range unlike Web, and will only work on a single enemy, but can take them pretty much out of battle for 3 whole turns. Just remember, they'll get free from the Cocoon so long as they take damage. As with the other pets, you don't gain anything special besides higher stats at the second upgrade. As for the ultimate spider variant, you'll get the Bursting Brood ability, that lets you apply the infestation debuff on enemies. This can even spread to nearby targets. But honestly, I'd rather just web or cocoon. Now it's time to cover the third of the best pets, the raven. The raven has the best early AC of all the pets, but its hit points aren't really the best. Anyways, its most unique feature is of course, first, the fact it can fly, unlike all other pets, which is great for movement and battlefield control. And just like the Raven Familiar, its most unique ability is the fact it can blind enemies, without any saving throw or resistance whatsoever. All it requires is for the attack to hit. Unlike the Raven Familiar, however, the Raven Beastmaster Pets Blind will last one more turn for double the amount. Considering Blind is one of the most crippling debuffs enemies can have, well, the Raven can be quite handy. The first Raven upgrade will increase its AC even further, we have close to 20 without buffs, and this is also when it acquires one of the most unique pet abilities, Bad Omen. The most interesting feature about this is that while it's only once per turn, it is actually a ranged ability with quite large range even. The other pets don't really have ranged attacks. It will not only deal damage, but can also apply a very nasty debuff that will make all attacks against the enemy come with advantage. The second upgrade is like this. And for its final form at level 11, you'll actually get two special abilities. The first is called On Black Wings, and will let you summon two additional ravens to your side. Pretty much the earliest, weakest version of the raven. Sadly, you'll not be able to directly control them. Second, another very interesting ability that will let you fly and also leave a darkness cloud that can blind enemies at your point of arrival, and amusingly enough, you can actually chain this multiple times by covering the entire battleground in darkness. After all, flight is limited only by your movement speed. Now let us cover the remaining two pets, which, well, in my humble opinion, aren't really as good as the three ones I've already covered. 
The bear has, well, the highest hit points of them all, but it also has the worst AC and initiative because of its terminally low dexterity score. The earliest variant doesn't really do much, it just has the Golden Roar ability, which you can also get as the bear wild shape which can force enemies into attacking the bear, but like I said, it's not like you have that high defenses for that. I definitely would not recommend it, at least the early variant. The first bear upgrade, however, will grant it a very unique ability called Honeyed Paws. The best part about this is that it won't just deal damage, but can also automatically disarm enemies, right? It's without any saving throw or resistance, just like the Raven Blind. Meanwhile, if the enemy is not wielding a weapon, they'll be knocked down instead, so it's quite a versatile ability. Especially as you can use it multiple times once you get more attacks, or when buffed with the haste spell. Enemies that lose their weapons will have to basically waste their turn picking them up and equipping them again, so the bear can work as a form of crowd control, it's just that once again, the bear has awful initiative, right? This is how the bear looks for its second upgrade. And for its final form, this is when the bear will get the unique Ursin Reinforcements, which will summon an extra bear to your side, pretty much the version you get at level 8. But once again, you cannot directly control it. Now let us cover the last pet, the boar. The boar, just like the bear, has criminally low armor class and initiative without the extra hit points to compensate. Its starter unique ability is called Boar Charge, which lets you charge at a line capable of hitting multiple enemies, and you also attempt to knock them down if they fail a saving throw while dealing damage to everyone. The first Boar upgrade will grant it the unique Frenzied Strike and also Rage abilities, just like the usual Barbarian Rage. It will enhance not only your damage, but also grant the boar full resistance to physical damage, which can help when it comes to tanking physical attacks. Just remember, you need to spend a bonus action initially to enter a rage, but for the other turns, because you'll have more bonus actions, you can then get a free attack through Frenzied Strike. This is how the second bear upgrade looks. Meanwhile, the ultimate boar version will get the Kick Up Muck ability, which can hit a lot of enemies in a very huge comb, by the way, with the slow debuff. For a nasty armor class and dexterity saves decrease. Now let's get at last into our Beastmaster build. When it comes to race, ideally one that has the Dark Vision ability, because it can really help ranged characters and I want this to be a ranged sharpshooter, as to have your pets protect your character. There's always a classic Wood Elf and Wood Half Elf for higher movement speed. Githyanki for higher skills. But honestly, any race will work just fine. As far as favored enemy, Bounty Hunter as usual if you want to rely on the Ensnaring Strike ability, but since you'll be dual wielding with this build, you already have a use for your bonus action. Ranger Knight can grant you proficiency with heavy armor, but you don't necessarily need it as you'll have super high dexterity for high AC. Anyways, just pick whatever will provide you with proficiency in a skill type you want. And for Natural Explorer, definitely Beast Tamer, we are a Beast Master after all. So that you can have a familiar, which you can then combine with the Beast Master pet. It's just that the familiars are static, right? They don't improve in levels or powers and stats. For stats, as you'll be going with a ranged character, 17 dexterity at character creation, it's the best stat in the game after all. You don't need strength at all unless you want to use bows for the titan string bow early. Charisma and intelligence are all dumpable, then around 14 constitution as usual, and well, you might as well start with decent enough wisdom like 16. It can help with the DC of some ranger abilities, if you want to use them, but most importantly, wisdom is directly tied to a lot of very important skills. Ideally, you want to cover insight and also perception, as these checks come a lot in the game. The other ones are up to you. Survival, of course, is classic for a ranger. 
the same for nature, although amusingly enough, it's based on intelligence instead of wisdom. Animal handling can work as well, but there's not that many checks of this in the game, but hey, it fits Ranger, right? And as always, pick a background that further complements your skills. Ideally, something that provides either insight or perception. Like the classic guild artisan, which also helps with persuasion for dialogue checks. Don't forget that this character can also specialize in traps and locks by virtue of having high dexterity, in which case you want something that provides you with the sleight of hand skill proficiency. The second level is when you first start getting ranger spells. Hunter's Mark can be useful for this building that your pets will also gain the bonus to damage from it. It's just that, well, it costs a bonus action to apply, right? Which means it kind of clashes with the bonus action from dual wielding. Fog Cloud can also be amazing for ranged characters with dark vision. Besides that, it's just a classic long strider with infinite uses for higher movement, especially on your pet. And then Snaring Strike if you want, but it also costs both a normal and bonus action, which I'd rather spend with the dual wielded attack. For fighting style, archery of course, it's a given. The plus 2 to attack rolls works on both main and offhand, it's just amazing overall. Now for level 3, more spells, let's pick Long Strider, and of course we are finally entering to Beast Master. For level 4, as with any ranged build, there is really nothing else to pick but Sharpshooter. What can I say? The plus 10 static bonus to both the main and offhand dual wield at hand crossbows attacks is amazing. The same for removing low ground penalties. I always say this, but if you're worried about the penalty to attack rolls, even as early as this point you can already have very high to hit chance with the penalty, and I have a guide covering all of that in depth with multiple sources. Plus you can always turn this on and off at will, right? It's not like you are stuck with it forever. At level 5 we get our extra attack and of course, the companion's bond for higher bonuses. For the level 2 spells, either spike growth or Pass without a trace, depending on what you want. For level 6, any other favored enemy, depending on whatever skill type you want. And for Natural Explorer, ideally the fire resistance, as it is the most common enemy elemental damage type. For level 7, any other spell you want. For our level 8 feat, I don't think you necessarily need alert with this build, but since you'll be going full out into ranger anyways, you'll have more than enough feats, so... Either higher dexterity now to max it out at 20, or alert. I'd rather alert just in case, because, well, if you are always acting first, you'll have a very easy time sniping most enemies before they can do anything. Any level 3 spells, you can go for Conjure Barrage or Lightning Arrow, as this character has enough, well, decent enough DC from High Wisdom. Any favorite enemy and Natural Explorer abilities, but ideally Poison Resistance. For level 11, we get our ultimate pet forms at last. And you might as well keep to full ranger for the extra feat. In my case, ability improvement, dexterity. Now let's just do a quick section on how to buff your pets before getting into gear. And honestly, it's pretty much the same as when buffing our characters or summons. The most important buff early is aid to increase the hit points of all party members. You can always upscale it for a stronger effect while later you can stack it with the Hero's Feast spell, but much later only. Besides that, Blast of course to increase your pet's hit chance, but ideally you want to apply Blast on all party members including pets through the Whispering Promise Ring whenever healing allies, especially through Mass Healing Ward. This way, everyone will be buffed with Blast automatically, without requiring concentration. Other than that, the Reviving Hands gloves at Act 3 or at the first Act Hellrider Sprite, so that your pets will also gain Blade Ward for full physical resistance against damage. And for higher damage, don't forget the Fowler Aluve Shriek Aura ability. Sadly, the Crusader's Mental Spell will not work for pets, I suppose because they don't have weapon attacks, they're unarmed. There's always the Mage Armor spell to increase pet AC earlier, because the other forms, so the upgraded variants, often have higher than 13 base armor class, so it won't work anymore. And of course the classic haste. For more actions, as pets take quite a while to get a second attack per action. Now let us cover gear for our Beastmaster Ranger. 
it's mostly going to be the same package for ranged characters, right? Because as far as the pets themselves, there's no gear that directly enhances them. Anyways, for Helmet, ultimately Sarah Vox for the highest critical range boost. For Act 1, anything you want, and for Act 2, well, the classic Dark Justicier or Covert Cowl, both do the same, also higher criticals. Cloaks don't matter unless you are the Dark Urge character, so just settle for the Shade Slayer Cloak later, because since you are a ranged character, you can benefit from the critical hit boost under stealth. For armor, this character can amusingly enough achieve decent enough AC by virtue of having super high dexterity. In which case you can go with the medium armors that have uncapped dexterity modifier to AC, the best one being armor of agility at Act 3, or the Yuanti scale mayo at the second act. For Act 1 you can truly go with anything you want, even heavy armor. And don't forget, for Act 3, someone in your party, ideally the tank, should definitely have the ballist armor, so that you deal double damage with your piercing ranged attacks. For gloves, just the classic Helldusk for higher damage on hit later, and for the first and second chapters, the classic gloves of archery, after all, the bonus is applied to both main and offhand attacks. Boots don't matter for this character, go with anything you want. For amulets, ideally Broodmother's Revenge for higher damage as early as the first chapter. But as always, you can also go with Surgeon's Subjugation later for, well, free criticals. As far as rings, one source of extra damage per hit, such as the classic Caustic Band. You can even go with Callous Glow, but I'd rather this for spellcasters. Ideally, what you want now is the classic Risky Ring for free advantage on all attacks, what's not you love. Now let's cover weapons and quick slots, and it's also the classic package for most characters. Especially ranged, because you can benefit from dual wielding, critical boosting weapons, such as the Knife of the Undermountain King as early as the first act, and for chapter 3, the Blade of First Blood or Blood Thirst. For weapons, while you can go with long bows, and I already have a build for that, hand crossbows are kinda better overall, because you can dual wield them, so Hellfire, plus Fire Stoker or the Nera Misser. And for consumables, always the Elixir of Bloodlust. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Beastmaster guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.